Salman al-Farisi is the only convert who was Farisi, who was Persian, and also the only convert from the religion of the Majus, Zoroastrianism. He was from a noble family. Salman al-Farisi passes by one of these Nestorian monks, Nestorianism. It is the oldest sect of Christianity that is still around. And when the emperor Constantine became Christian, he adopted a version of Christianity that is Trinitarianism, three equals one. One version, Nestorianism said, no, Jesus was human and then he became God. And Allah's qadr, that when Constantine banned all other versions, Nestorians fled to Persia. And so the only version of Christianity in Persia was closer to Tawheed. Because they believed in one ultimate God, Salman al-Farsi passes by one of these Nestorian monks. He is attracted to Tawheed. He leaves the nobility of his father. He gives up his life and his wealth and he joins Christianity, but his father wants to kill him. And so he flees Persia, going wherever the Christians can take him. He gave up his wealth and his fame. He left his land with nothing and he traveled to the closest land in the lands of the Christians and he went up to the highest priest and that priest adopted him because he was an exalted. Persian convert, the priest who adopted him turned out to be an evil and corrupt man, but it only increased his iman in Allah. And when he exposed the priest, the Christians admired and respected him. And so Allah blessed an outsider to become an esteemed insider because Salman was true and Salman lived up to the ideals. He goes over a series of five, six, seven, some reports say 12 priests, one after the other. He goes over wanting to study and search for the truth, wanting to be a scholar and a worshiper of Allah and he meets good priests and bad priests but subhanallah even when he meets corrupt priests his iman in Allah is never shaken and he asked one of his mentors of the Nestorians who can I go to to study with so the mentor said there's one person I know you can go to him and the story goes on every person he was with two three four years when he's about to die he sends him to one person but subhanallah when you look at the map and literally from Persia he goes from city to city and Allah's qadr he makes his way to the borders of Arabia slowly but surely every priest that sends him forward he sends him closer to the Prophet ﷺ until the final priest that he studies with, the final priest says, I don't know anybody who is remaining upon our version of Christianity. They're all gone. But you are now at a time when the one whom our teachers told us about when Jesus predicted, the one that we predicted is going to come. I feel he's going to come. And I will tell you the signs we know. So we know that Isa ﷺ taught his followers certain signs and some sects of Christianity preserved those signs. He said, I'm going to teach you three things. Number one, one, one of the signs of this prophet, he will not accept charity. Number two, he will accept a gift. And number three, there is a special seal on his body, a physical seal that's going to be on his body. And he said, the only thing I know, he shall be in a land of date palms. So he asked, where is the closest land of date palms? He was told Tabuk. So Salman al-Farsi then decided at this time he has wealth, he has crops, he sold everything. He found an Arab tribe. He goes, I'm going to pay you money. Can you take me to Tabuk? They said, sure, no problem. They took his money. Soon as they left the Roman Empire, khalas, they captured him and they sold him into slavery. And then Allah's qadr, the one he sells him to happens to be a Yehudi from Yathrib. And so he comes back all the way to Yathrib. He has no option. He's nowhere to go. So he becomes working. The report goes, when I saw Yathrib, when I saw the date palms, it came in my heart that Allah has sent me to this place. Look again. He gave up everything. He becomes a slave. His iman is still strong. Even as a slave, he didn't lose his iman in Allah. He was hopeful, I'm going to meet the Prophet. As you know, eventually the Prophet came to Yathrib and he wanted to test him. He said, I took some of the dates and I presented it to the Prophet and I said, this is sadaqah, this is charity for the poor. And I put it in front of him. So the Prophet said to the people around him, come eat from the charity. And Salman said, I saw his hand did not touch a single date. So I said to myself, this is one of the three signs. Then I worked more and more and then I presented another dates a few days later. I said, this is hadiyah, this is a gift to you. And he said to the the people come eat and he ate as well. So Salman said, this is the second. But then he goes, how am I going to see the third? So he said, I kept on being in the company of the process of every occasion to see. And once he went to the Baqir al-Gharqa, the graveyard, and there was a burial taking place and he was going to go inside the, the qabr to put the body and he was wearing an izar, the ihram type of garment. So I realized this is my opportunity. I walk behind him, but he had the izar on, the rida on very tightly. I wasn't able to see. So I'm saying, what can I do now? 
now. And the Prophet saw me behind and so he lowered the rida so that he can show me. And when Salman al-Farsi saw this, he burst into tears and he rushed to kiss the Prophet Sallallahu and he rushed to hug him. And the Prophet understood this man's story is not typical because nobody knows this sign except the silsila from Jesus Christ. So he says, what is your story, O Salman? So Salman tells the entire story and the Prophet said, come to the masjid, you will tell your story to everybody. And then the Prophet says to him, O Salman, ask your master for a price. We will help you pay it. We will help free you. The way he went to his master, the master says, I don't want to sell you. But he insisted. So the master gave an exorbitant price. He said, you must plant 300 date palms for free. And you must wait until those 300 are now able to give their own dates, which is going to take 5-10 years. And on top of that, give me 40 uqiyah of silver, 40 grams of silver. So he went back to the process and I'm sad. Said, Ya Rasulullah, my master is not budging. So he said, don't worry. And then he stood up and he gave a fundraiser for Salman. This is one of the few times the process himself does the fundraiser. And he says, oh, people of Medina, bring your date palms to Salman. Donate, not the seed, but dig up and already planted those seeds that are already sprouting those small baby ones, so that we already expedite the process. And whoever wants to give sadaqah, give sadaqah to Salman. And so, one by one, the farmers began coming until they had 300 saplings in the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. Then he said to Salman, okay, ya Salman, go and dig 300 holes, but don't plant them. I will plant them. So Salman went and he spent the whole few days digging 300 holes. Then the Prophet ﷺ took a team of people. They're all carrying the 300. And then, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, with his own hands, planted 300 date palms. And he made dua every time when he planted. He made dua. And subhanallah, of course, this is the barakah. Then that seed comes out and within a few weeks or months, all of these 300 have now gone years that all of this has happened. How about the money? What's going to happen? We don't have 40 grams of silver. So once a man came and said, Ya Rasulullah, I found some amount here and this is fi sabirillah, sadaqah. I'm giving you to give to somebody. So the Prophet got this small amount and he said, where's the Farsi guy? So he was a slave. They went and called him. So the Prophet said, here, this is for your freedom. Salman said, Ya Rasulullah, you wanted 40 grams. This is not going to work. The Prophet took that silver, he put it on his tongue and he went back and forth and he said, go tell your master to weigh this. So he takes this small amount as if it is a large amount and he says to the man, this is the amount you wanted. The man just takes it, weighs it and turns out to be 40. So he said, khalas, you are free then. And this incident took place a few weeks before the battle of Khandaq. So Salman, when he's narrating as a much older man, he said, because of this, I was not able to attend Badr and Uhud and that is my biggest regret. You all know he was the one who gave the advice for the Khandaq because he's bringing in new technology and again this shows us the spirit of Islam. We are always willing to take knowledge from people outside of our faith that is not related to Allah and His Messenger. There's one point that is really so profound to me. In the battle of Khandaq, Salman is neither Muhajir nor Ansari. So during the battle of Khandaq, when the Sahaba split into two teams to dig for the Khandaq, each team said, Salman, just come join us. We want you to come. It's like a competition. Come on, you migrated your Makkah. No, no, you were here in Medina, you're Ansari. So they're teasing each other in a halal, gentle, Islamic brotherhood competition. Each one is praising Salman, join us. And Salman stuck, which side do I go to to help? And then the Prophet ﷺ came out. He held the hand of Salman and he said, Salman is neither Muhajir nor Ansari. Salman minna ahl al bayt. He gave him a VIP upgrade. The only Sahabi that's not ahl al bayt that was upgraded to ahl al bayt status. And that's why Salman could never accept sadaqah till he died because the Prophet ﷺ upgraded him to Ahl al-Bayt status. One of the things that to me is the most mind-boggling and profound is that after the Prophet ﷺ passed away, Salman is now participating in the battles and he joins the battle of Qadisiyah. The battle of Qadisiyah was against his own peoples, the Persians. And so now he is one of the commanders in the battle of Qadisiyah that is meant to free his own people from the paganism and to invite them to Islam. And he, of course, is one of the main leaders and generals. Qadisiyah is a massive victory and the Persian Empire is conquered and Salman al-Farisi is amongst the first of the people who enter the very land that was his once upon a time. He's the only Persian Sahabi and now he enters the very palaces of the land that he could not go in as a citizen. Now now he comes from a slave, from leaving as somebody that gave up everything. Now Allah blessed him to walk into the most magnificent palace of the emperor of the Sassanid Empire. And subhanAllah, the Amir said to Salman al-Farsi, 
you shall be the leader or the governor of your land here. Subhanallah, to me, this is mind boggling. He left his land fleeing, persecuted, and he comes back more than 50, 60, 70 years later. We don't know exactly how long. He comes back after all of these years. He basically becomes the de facto ruler and the governor of his own province and land. Subhanallah. And he passes away there and his qabr is over there. When you put your trust in Allah and when you realize Allah will take care of me. Indeed, Allah takes care of you. Salman got deen and dunya. By the way, he got dunya, but he never ever lived in a lavish way. In fact, it is said he would not sleep in the palace. He would sleep under a tree. His whole life he was monastery in Christianity. His whole life was zuhd and ibadah and whatnot. So he didn't like the palace. So he went and slept under a tree. The people would say to him, you have the palace. He goes, this is more beloved to me just to sleep underground and whatnot. Until finally somebody said, I have to build you a house. I beg you, let me build you a house. Salman said, how large is it going to be? The man understood. So he goes, it will be so large that when you stand up, your head is going to hit against the roof. And when you put your feet out, you won't have space to fully spread it. He goes, okay, that's fine then. So he built him a small little hut and that was his house. And it is said once in the books of history that Salman would dress exactly the same, no entourage. Once a merchant came from another land to sell his goods and he needed help transporting from the camel to the bazaar. He's looking for some cheap labor and he sees Salman but he just doesn't recognize him. So he goes, hey you, Anta, can you help me with my goods? So Salman comes up, starts helping the goods from the man's camel to the bazaar. When the other people see, he said, let us help you. So the man said, who is this guy? He goes, this is the leader. This is Salman al farisi He said, I'm so sorry, I didn't recognize you. And Salman said, so what? You asked me a favor and I'm doing it. What's the big deal? It was my niyyah to take your goods from your place to your bazaar and I'm going to finish this. Subhanallah, the humility of Salman al farisi And of course, he passed away and he's buried over there. Our Prophet Wasallam said that if Iman were in one of the northern stars, then this person from Persia would have gotten it. If Iman were found way up there in the skies, then the Pharisee would have found it up there. Whoever puts his trust in Allah, Allah will take care of him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on Salman al-Farsi and resurrect us with him.